So there's the truck. And there's the load. So, got a bunch of steel on there. Dual tandem 25 foot trailer. So, they're doing some work. And there we are, finished the trip. So, it's cooling on down. This thing gets down to 300, I'll shut it off and we'll go take a look at the data logger information. See how this S200, well, S300G's, also known as a Super B from BD, compares to the uh, stock H1C, which is like an HX35, only a little older. Same wheels, but let's go take a look at the data. Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to Outside the Shop. Mm. Take a little look at some computer stuff here today. Uh, this is part of the world's biggest turbo test, maybe, for uh, 12 valve Cummins engines. Where's the P pumper of VE? This really applies the same because uh, they have the same camshafts and cylinder heads, is what I got because I got an intercooled motor. So that stuff's the same all the way up through 98. It's hard parts wise fuel systems different but I've got plenty of fuel to push these chargers to the limit it's essentially a turbo test for low-end performance slash towing heavy towing if you're towing light you can get by with uh, a lot more turbocharger than you can uh, towing heavy and it depends on what rpms you want to run if you don't mind turning three grand down the road all the time then uh, you can run a lot bigger turbocharger than if you're like me and you're trying to run low RPMs and cruise down the road. So, my 307 gears, trailer heavy and fourth. Way I'm not pulling through the gear set and the transmission, and the transmission survives. Uh, pulling an overdrive with big loads on a get rag, uh, not the greatest idea. You'll like to kill it off. Things you figure out from the Data monster that you never really thought about, probably. So, this was the very first run that I logged. Uh, this was a trip to work in the morning when I got on the interstate. So, let's take a look. So, this particular graph here is the ambient air density. So, this is a sensor I've mounted in the grill of my truck. I found it interesting. Uh, this is stopped. This is me getting onto the interstate. Uh, I was in a construction zone, so uh, speed was 60 or so here. And then uh, I had to slow down in the construction, 55, back up to 60, coming out. Uh, on up 65 and then up to 70 and 70 miles an hour the brick pushes 80 pounds per thousand cubic feet versus 79 really so about a pound picks up about one pound at highway speed I thought that was cool you can actually see every time accelerate and decelerate uh, it shows up this let off the gas, it's getting off the interstate. So, accelerate a little bit, off the gas, accelerate, off the gas. Now, I found it funny that that showed up, but it ain't really what this is about. Let me switch the log file here to uh, Dino Hill. There's Dino Hill. Let me change this to RPM. Try and do all these the same, even though I've already screwed that up, but it's fine. So on my first run, I started out at 1,800 RPM. This is 22,500 pounds gross weight and a 9% grade. And I floorboard it here and see the RPMs climb on up 
to go up the grade and top out at 23.50 probably on that run and you can see that uh, the boost and drive pressure is just kind of cruising along run very much the same on the HX3512 stock charger and when you get after it they just both jump up together but uh, it just caps out it's out of air basically uh, only reason why this boost number is going up is because that's drive pressure showing back through where the drive pressure keeps increasing uh, that eventually shows back through into boost pressure so it means we're well out running the turbocharger and the condensed version here this was the HX35 boost is at 42.33 pounds for a max drive pressure 53.48 manifold air density is 73.95 per thousand or ambient air density was 73.95 that run the uh, manifold density is 256 boost air density 182 which is the difference between manifold and ambient so it doesn't count what the atmosphere is so this is the number that's important for comparison purposes because the weather's different on different days when I run these this basically takes out the weather the peak EGT is 1745 uh, peak RPM 2339 and the outside temp is 55 degrees so change turbos s300 g part number 174 430 and it's a much better match for this engine and the this time the run was started at 1500 and then full boarded and took it to 2500 and there's you can see the, the boost comes on pretty quick boost is actually ahead of the turbine on this particular turbo uh, which is a good thing and runs quite a bit different it's on up to about uh, let's see at 2400 rpm it crosses over the boost drive threshold so anything beyond 2400 RPM, it's uh, it's going the opposite way. The compressor is uh, falling off, and the turbine's choking it up. So any other turbos that y'all have interest in me testing, if uh, I plan to do an HX40, because I've got one of those laying around, and. Uh, my old uh, S300 off the yellow truck, I got it laying around, it's a 62, so we'll test it out and I'll show you why a 62 is not a good match for a 12 valve probably. It, uh, it's going to be lazy down here. It, it'll come on up top a lot more, it'll probably be about 400 RPM moved over basically, this graph would. Do a general driving file, I'll show you how these turbos perform under regular driving conditions so this is probably the more telling for if you're not just doing uh, dyno runs as far as what the performance of the actual turbocharger is like in daily driving conditions and you can see the uh, red lines the turbine pressure and the blue lines the boost and on that HX35, they run very close to the same, most all the time. Uh, you can get the boost to be just a little tiny bit ahead from time to time. But uh, mainly, it's always under. And that's not really ideal. RPMs is driving down the road. Now look at when I switch turbos to the S300G. 
So there we are again. That's the uh, boost to drive pressure with the S300G. Just driving around with the 22,500 pound gross load. And you see, most of the time, uh, the boost is better than the drive, which is really good. Only time it crossed over really was at the very top there when I was up close to 2500 RPM. But so this charger is really good in the 1800 2000 RPM range. If if that's where your where your cruise speed is, it's an excellent match. A lot better than stock, and the spool seems to be every bit as good as the stock. Mm. Scavenge ratio is the boost to drive pressure basically over the engine, and. As you can see with the S300G, it's averaging 20% or better most of the time. Back to the HX35, and it's less than 20 pretty much all the time under the same operating conditions. This, I think, was a downshift where this spike is. There's the comparative numbers. Those over there is for the S300G. I can see everything went up. Except for the drive pressure, which knocked off quite a bit. And let's take a look at the what that probably did to the power. Just as an aside, not really to the turbos, but Let's take a look at the. So this is the stock intercooler, the charge air cooler effectiveness. And see, it's a little better than 80% a day at full boost, uh, as it gets more heat soaked over time. We're dropping down to 75 or so. And of course, it's not nearly as good. The lower the boost level, it only runs down here in the 30-40% because there's not nearly as great a temperature differential. But let's take a look at the pressure drop. Delta pressure charger cooler. So, see with the stock air cooler. At peak flow, I'm losing about four and a quarter psi. Not terrible, really, for a stock cooler. Mm. A good cooler would probably drop about two, two and a half pounds at uh, that same flow rate. But uh, it's not terribly out of line. You, you'll always lose some pressure just because of the temperature drop. Uh, the more dense air that's coming out of the cooler versus what's going in is always going to create some pressure differential across it. Like the best cooler out there would probably be a half a pound to maybe a pound at this temperature differential. You know, because we're looking at uh, compressor outlet temps. Yes, yeah, so the compressor outlet temperatures 517, 518 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's having to scrub a lot of heat off. There's the manifold air temperature. So. And max are looking at 156 degrees. Just cruising around, running about 80. We'll take a look at that over a long run. So just driving around, pulling the trailer, and see the the manifold air temps. There's at low speed, it got up to about 100, and it's highway speed. The longer you run, it dragging down, made a hard pull up the hill, got up to 434, 445, but still the intake's barely over 100. And then cooled right back down again. So the intercooler's working decent. It's doing its thing, even if maybe not the best it could be. 
but we're gonna leave everything the same for now during this testing so it's all comparable and then this is a graph of the uh, air intake restriction basically this in front of the turbocharger this is how much uh, density is being shaved off compared to atmospheric so losing almost 10 pounds per thousand feet which is a pretty good percentage but we may try to improve that in the future this is mainly intake air restriction is pulling about a pound, a little over a pound of restriction through the air filter in the stock air box but uh, everything's all stock there and we're going to leave it the same for all the other turbo testing so that it's comparative so the boost air density is running right around 200 or a little better than 250 percent full tilt so adding a lot of power with this turbocharger um, there's all the data give you a chance to look at everything so yeah between the hx35 and the s300g added 8.8 percent uh, more boost air density which is a big gain uh, it's close to 10 percent in power probably uh, took 12.3 percent off the egt which in reality is actually more than that because uh, this was a longer run it was running up 2500 instead of 2300 so this number would have been higher anyway so maybe closer to 15 percent lower egt and the big difference was uh, it took 31.9 seconds to go from 1800 to 2300 rpms pulling that hill with that load with the hx 3512 so the s300g is 57.65 with a 0.80 housing so that's a six and a half second change which is about 25 percent quicker so it's a lot of horsepower not just from the 10 percent increase in boost air density but dropping that drive pressure off uh, that's a lot a lot of freed up energy a lot of freed up horsepower and should be a lot less fuel burned to do the same work because there's no fueling changes whatsoever in this that's just the difference in the turbo Well, I hope you learned something from all of this data. It could be overwhelming, but if you're a tech junkie, you'll definitely enjoy this. And if you're looking for a turbocharger to put on your 12 valve Cummins 5.9, then uh, for doing heavy towing or low end RPM performance, uh, this pertains to you. Uh, as we'll see when I get the 62 on there a lot of people are like well you just need more fuel well that's kind of true and kind of not uh, at a certain point even more fuel won't make it run at a certain low rpm uh, it has to have a given amount of engine speed for it to work regardless of how much fuel you throw at it it'll just smoke and make heat and not make any power but what we're after is something that has virtually instantaneous power when you hit the go pedal and can just cruise down the road and do its thing and make massive torque and pull big loads uh, we're not needing to win any drag races with this thing we just want to pull uh, whatever weight we want to hook behind it up any hill we want to go up without having to downshift gears so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i'll catch y'all later